we're going to look at finding common denominators. This is much like the last lesson where we talked about uh, common multiples and the LCM least common multiple. So finding the common denominator is really just doing that first problem. Let's say you're making a cake, or two friends are making cake, and Sue wants to cut it in, in half, whereas Deja wants to cut it into thirds. And you want to figure out a way that you can satisfy both of them so that Sue can cut it in half and Deja can cut it in thirds. What you're really doing here is you're finding the least common multiple. All right, so we're looking at the two and the three. So if we think about it, what factors are for two? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, and so on. Factors for three. Three, six, nine, 12, oh, stop. I heard a least common factor of six. So the way we can break this up, this. So now we have cut in half, but also in thirds. And that is finding a least common, or the least, or finding a common denominator. In this case, we're finding the least common denominator. Um, a common denominator would also be 12. In this case, uh, 24 would work. So there are multiple common denominators, but you want to try to get the smallest one because that makes it easier on you. So let's look at the two ways of finding a common denominator. The first thing, first way, is we have this, 2 thirds and 3 fourths. The, e the easiest way to do this is when you multiply them by each other. And when you do that, you get 12, because 3 times 4 is 12 and 4 times 3 is 12. However, whatever you do to the bottom, you must do to the top. So if we multiply this by 4, this also must get multiplied by 4. And 2 times 4 is 8. If we multiply this by 3 to get 12, we must multiply the top by 3 to get 12. And that is 9. So these are equivalent fractions. 2 thirds and 8 twelfths are, and 3 fourths and 9 twelfths are equivalent fractions. That way is the easiest way, but it isn't always the best way. So let's look at the next problem. We have 1 sixth and we have 1 third. Let's look at the smaller number. Does that smaller number go into 6? Does 3 go into 6? Your answer is yes it does. So we're going to keep our 1 sixth the same. And how do we get the 3 to become a 6? We multiply by 2. So when we multiply 3 by 2, we must multiply the 1 by 2 to get 2. Now what this is going to help you do is in the end, you're not going to have to simplify as much. So that is how you find the least common denominator and find any common denominator. We are going to use this in the next couple lessons to add and subtract fractions.